Okay, welcome back to our second lecture in measuring a nation's cost of living, chapter 11. We covered in the first video why or how, what CPI is and sort of why it's important. We're going to have more of that in the last video. But uh, what the objective of this video is to show you how to compute CPI and what you can do with it and what you cannot do with it. Now, keep in mind, we're computing an index. And an index basically is this sheet of numbers that you can look at and make a lot of conclusions very easily. Uh, it's very much a continuation of what we did uh, last semester. Uh, or excuse me, last semester, last week, hopefully it wasn't last semester, it feels like it's been a semester in a week, uh, last week in chapter 10 where we were doing gross domestic product and we did a deflator and we had an inflation rate in year two, you're going to see that again, only we're going to be dealing with cost of living instead of income. Um, I will add that uh, my lovely daughter is doing some piano lessons and she's downstairs practicing, so if you can hear it, you can enjoy the free music. Um, CPI to be fully useful as a five-step process. But it's the same thing like we're saying in the, in the first video. Hey, all these things that people normally buy, we're gonna put them in a cart at Costco, we're gonna go check out, we're gonna see how much it costs, and then we're gonna compare your cost year over year, and that's inflation. Um, it's the same thing, and in fact, we're gonna use the same examples we did in chapter um, 10, where we did GDP, we're gonna have the hot dog economy, where we had hot dogs and hamburgers. In fact, the only thing we're putting in our cart, our basket, are hot dogs and hamburgers. And so let's get started. This is table one in your reading. Uh, so if we move a little fast, I'm working straight out of this table. So first step is to fix the basket. What are the things on my shopping list? Well, in this example, I'm getting four hot dogs and two hamburgers. Okay, four hot dogs and two hamburgers. The next thing is I find the price. Just like when you're shopping, you're buying something, you look for the price. I'm gonna find a price. And uh, this is a newest edition, so we're actually going one year in the future. It's pretty cool. 2019, 2020, 2021. Price of hot dog goes from $1, $2, $3. Price of hamburgers goes from $2, $3, $4. So price is growing up over time. That illustrates our inflation. Um, so we've gathered, we've, we've figured out what's on our list. We've gathered our prices. And we're computing the cost of the basket now. And that's very simple. We're just going to the checkout and we're ringing it up. Um, again, we're buying hot dogs and hamburgers. Hot dogs in a quantity in our list of four. So we're getting four each year. And hamburgers in our very simplified example here, we're getting two each year. And the prices of hot dogs go from one to two to three. So uh, hamburgers also go from two to three to four. So we're just checking out. So 2019, let's check out. We're getting four hot dogs at $1 a piece, and we're gonna add it to, I forgot to add my addition in here, four hot dogs at one a piece and two hamburgers at two a piece. Our cost of our basket at checkout is $8. 2020, a uh, simplified example, price is now $2. We're getting four of them, okay, plus, three hamburgers, or excuse me, two hamburgers at $3, and we get a total of eight plus six, which is 14. So our checkout price is $14. So from 2019 to 20, or 2019 to 2020, the cost of buying four hot dogs and two hamburgers went from $8 to $14, your cost of living went up. Um, to further illustrate this, 2021, $3 for a hot dog, we're getting four again, $4 for hamburger, we're getting two again, and checking out and suddenly is $20. So if you've noticed prices go up over time, well, that's inflation. So we're buying the same thing. Hot dogs, hamburgers in the same quantity, but prices are going up. We're seeing our cost of living go up if all we're buying is hot dogs and hamburgers in this example. Uh, now, how do we analyze this? Well, we choose a base year. Let's go with 2019, that's the first year, and let's compute CPI. Well, how do you do that? Well, CPI, much like how you compute the GDP deflator in the previous chapter, we take the price of a basket, what we're checking out for right here, okay? and in the current year, and we divide it by the price of the basket in the base year. Now keep in mind, 2019 is gonna be our base year. So the 2019 example is very, very simple. $8 over $8, because that's the price in the current year, 2019, and the base year, 2019, times 100. Why times 100? We're trying to create an index. The I and the CPI is index. And we get a score of 100. Now keep in mind from the previous chapter, you always know the base year has a score of 100. That's very useful. 2020, our current base, or excuse me, our current basket cost is $14. That's why 14 is there. Our base year basket cost was $8 times 100 is 175. We now know there was 75% 70, inflation between the base year 
of 2019 to 2020. Now, some of you are going to say, hey, well, in the GDP, we did the same calculation, and it was 71%, if I recall. Um, yeah, yes and no. It was a similar calculation, but keep in mind in that, we were doing GDP. It was all consumption of hot dogs and hamburgers. Here, it's just your particular list. So individual people will be affected similarly, but not exactly the same as the entire economy. It kind of depends on where they live, what they're buying, and all that type of thing. So, um, we can know we can compare back to the base year. Remember that? Compare back to the base year. Compare back to the base year. Compare back to the base year. Don't do anything else. Um, you can only compare to the base year here. 2021, we take our current um, market basket cost, which is $20, and we divide it by our base year market basket cost, which is $8, and multiply by that 100 and put it into an index. And we see then our new score is 250. So we know between 2020 and 2019 there was 75% inflation and between 2019 and 2021 there was 150% inflation. You're like, how do I get that? You take your current CPI score and subtract out your base. So 175 minus 100 is 75%. 250 minus 100 is 150%. So I know I can compare back to the base here, compare back to the base here, compare back to the base here. I can't do it any other way. You can compare only to the base here unless you use the CPI scores, just like you did with the GDP deflator in the last chapter, to compute the inflation rate in year two. Inflation rate in year two is, uh, when we talk about CPI, is calculated CPI year two minus CPI year one divided by CPI year one. Basically, you're taking the most recent year you want, subtracting out the previous year, and making it your new base year. These two numbers should be the same because they're both CPI in year one. Multiply it by 100 to get an index. If you recall, with GDP deflator, this was GDP deflator year two, GDP deflator year one divided by GDP deflator year one. So... You're doing the same thing. Isn't it awesome when you learn something, you get to use it again? Well, guess what? In 2020, uh, let's test it to make sure we get 75% again. 175 minus 100 divided by 100 times 100 to put it in the index. We get 75%. It passed the test. This is correct. We can use this. Now, we cannot compare non-base years. Do not do it. Doggone it. Some of you are going to do it. You already did it on the homework. You can't compare this. You always have to compare to the base year, and yes, unless you do the inflation rate in year two calculation, both with GDP deflator and CPI. It's like a different language you're speaking now. You're trying to keep up, but you're speaking it. Let's take uh, CPI in year two, which is our more recent year of 250. Let's subtract out 175, which is the previous year, going to be our new base year, divided by 175, which is our new base year. We're expressing 2021 and 2020 dollars times 100, which is an index, and we find out inflation was actually 43%. Now I can compare non-base years by using the inflation rate in year two equation. This is mirroring exactly what we did with GDP deflator. So uh, only we're talking about CPI, consumer price index, which is an indicator of cost of living. Now why might that matter? Hmm. Let's see, I'm paid in dollars, and then I take those dollars to buy things. If what I'm paid in stays here, but everything I'm about to buy goes up like that, aren't I indeed poorer? Think about it. We'll address that in the next video.